Hello everyone and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade, and I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 234. Today is Saturday, June 16th, 2018, and I'm glad you could join me today. Um, it was actually not too bad in the shade today, um, but I decided to record inside anyways. I'm sort of like in the middle of making dinner. <laughs> Apparently at the part where you're like, waiting until everyone's hungry enough to finish. <laughs> so I figured I could podcast. <laughs> Since we're in a holding pattern. Oh well, it shouldn't be too crazy. Um, so, I have, in the spirit of Stash Dash, as it turns out, there is a decent amount to show you guys this week, which is cool. Um, what was it? I was discussing in, in the thread in the Knit Girls group about like, hey, what would it take in order to succeed? <laughs> um, and like people are going to be like, it's going to be this many yards a week or this many yards a day. And what would it be? For some reason, 47 yards per day sounded less crazy pants than, or sorry, 47 meters per day sounded slightly less crazy pants than, uh, what is it, like 400 meters a week or something like that. So we'll see whether or not I've actually made a decent dent this week. I haven't updated my totals since last week, but um, I do believe the, <laughs> what was it, in order for me to hit 15K, um, I would need to be at um, 100 meters per day. <laughs> which is twice what's reasonable, 700 meters a week, so. Probably means I should spin more, because I think that's the only way I'm hitting, hitting that. But I do have quite a few finished objects, so I guess I can start with the socks. Um, so I finally finished my longest Languishing work in progress. I started these in January. I cast on the 2nd of February, and then I didn't do anything until recently. <laughs> like a blanket, a bunch of baby hats, and a sweater dress jumped them in line. But now they are complete. So these are the Linaria by a Partita socks. It's a Hunter Hammerson from the Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet. Um, and I knit these out of, um, a sock blank from Sheep Dreamery. Oh, I swear that tag was here. Maybe it fell on the floor. I'm not sure whether or not Sheep Dreamery is still in business. Um, I ended up buying this yarn at SSK 2015. So it was the Potomac sock blank in the Blue Jeans Baby colorway. And, oh, they are gorgeous. Um, so they, you can sort of see how this guy here is more stripy than this guy, but they're both pretty stripy overall. So they're, it was a, um, double-stranded sock blank, um, but I don't do two at a time socks. I didn't know that when I bought it. <laughs> that might be a problem. So they're, like, it, it goes nicely with the mostly identical um, it goes less nicely with me doing socks one at a time. But I finished these um, while I was sitting outside at Starbucks this afternoon. Outside. Even though it was 90 something out. <laughs> it was okay in the shade. Um, but at last, done. So um, I haven't totaled up my yardage yet. Um, so I haven't totaled up my yardage for these guys yet. but very exciting. So I need to take some FO pictures, so I'll probably leave them on the blockers and hopefully not forget to do that. But, oh my gosh. It's been, it's been a very long time since I've had socks take that long. I think we're perfectly fine to work on. <laughs> I had some fits casting on, but I think that was because I was done being around human beings when I cast the second sock on. But, oh well, whatever. So, 
done. Um, the other two items I finished for Stash Dash are spinning. Going, going with the theme. So, um, I have my waist skein, which turned out to be, I think, 50 some, like 58 grams and 232 yards. So, it's a little bit of yardage. A little bit for stash dash. Um, I can't count all of it though because I did end up plying with um, I didn't end up plying with Zephyr so I don't get to count it all the way. But it is um, a pretty soft skein. I'm rather glad I combined it with something because I don't think it would have been very much without that. There we go. So, pretty gorgeous fiber. Um, so, um, I plied it with my Zephyr, which is up there. Wait, there we go, right there. <laughs> so, I have my, my pound of Zephyr lace, which is just insane. Um, and it tends to be a really good thing when you don't have a lot of yardage. So it's a way of stretching it appropriately. And I think I was working on the singles last week, maybe? I hadn't started it. It was a really quick project. Or I talked about it last week and I'm just showing you guys again because I washed it. <laughs> um, so overall very soft. Um, I ended up not trying to do it super duper thin. I think I used a bigger ratio than I've been using lately. And I've been actually really happy with how that's been turning out. So this is a mixture of, um, so the Zephyr is a 50-50 merino silk. And then um, there is some fiber optics, so that's an 80-20 silk. Then spread them all out and who knows what the percentage is. And then the other colors, so, and then the rest of it is made up of debulé, which is um, a pretty of sheep. So a little bit of gnome spun, a little bit of zephyr, and a little bit of fiber optic in this skein. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. They might be mitts, or they might be incorporated into the cowl that I am planning on making with the other stuff. Because it seems like 200 grams would be about right for a cowl. Um, and this guy is 44 grams. And I really, I really don't remember what the yardage was at all. So we'll ask Instagram. Um, I will be able to count all of this for the stash dash. So that's good. All right, so this is 193 yards of a two ply. And like an ounce and a half. So roughly speaking. So a little bit so what would it be? So this would be probably a light fingering weight. And I don't know whether or not the color is gonna come out entirely right, but we'll just hold it up close. So this is super duper gorgeous. And actually, I'm pretty happy with how the color is turning out. Um, this is so soft and nice. So I I ended up doing using a bigger ratio than I normally do on this. Um, and I still managed to spin it really fine because my um, top that I pulled off the hackle wasn't very thick. So it was just naturally going to turn out pretty fine. Um, like need to like exfoliate my hands and I'm and I don't normally exfoliate anything <laughs> I'm like uh, I don't even know what's going on <laughs> so this is um, going to be a part of I'm, I think I'm gonna make a foolproof as a coordinating thing with the hat that still needs to be knit um, but uh, I'm just really happy with how this ended up turning out. So there's, um, overall it's sort of like a cool red, but then with shots of like a bright red and then like 
purples and pinks in it. So this is a really, really gorgeous skein. So happy with how that's turning out. I do have two more bundles left to spin. Um, but we shall see how, or we shall see like what order everything ends up getting done in. Um, what I'm going, well I haven't, okay, so I haven't figured out what I'm doing yet. So, here's the dilemma. Tour de Fleece starts in about two weeks. Um, there are a bajillion challenges going on in the Fun Onion group. So, for which I could probably make stuff work. Um, one of the challenges is taking fiber, splitting it into component parts, and spinning it a bunch of different ways. Which, technically speaking, I've done. <laughs> But I'm almost done. <laughs> so um, I've been really excited about this project, really enjoying it, so I sort of don't want to like get it all done. Or what would it be? So the other one is a spin of at least eight ounces for a sweater, which is a project that I have going on right now. Um, I have one bobbin done. So, two bobbins to go, and then I will have three ply for a sweater. Um, but I do also have my... Just grab it. I still have these guys left to go. And I think they're going to be so gorgeous when they're spun up. I'm probably going to do the purple next because I'm going to try to do the blue while I can enjoy it in the sunshine and daylight. So, or some other project. I'm not sure. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do exactly. Um, now you're supposed to like put like an, the theme are like French movie posters um, and probably is the case where you just sort of find something that has the colors already of what you're looking for and call it good. <laughs> I don't know. So that is the story there is I'm not quite sure or whether or not I pull out different spin the bin fibers in order to do something. Um, but, or maybe it's just the case where I can't make the prompt fit. Like, the group does a lot of, like, also, a lot of interesting challenges, and especially around Tour de Fleece is when it gets the most crazy pants. Um, but I decided not to participate in the swap. Um, I did the swap in for the analytics, and that was, that was good fun. Um, but I just wasn't sure about, like, adding another spinning project to all the ones that I have going right now. Um, that wasn't like spin the bin related. So, uh, I don't know. Um, so, just, so, I haven't decided yet. Like you would think that it would probably make sense to try to decide soon. <sighs> Shenanigans. So, um, what would it be? So that's that's where that's standing right now. Um, I did cast on a new project this week, so we're sort of jumping around a little bit. We'll jump back, it's okay. <laughs> um, so I um, ended up hand winding all of my balls. Um, so that I could knit this dress. So this is the mini dress pattern. It is by Caddy Melville Ledbetter. And um, I am doing it out of Fiber Natura um, flax, which is linen, um, in three different colors, which I think I talked about last week, which was regatta, silver, and turquoise. 
So um, I have substituted the medium color for my navy blue. I did the bright turquoise for the dark color in the pattern, and then light is the light. Um, just because that was what my yarn amounts were. So, um, cast on, didn't really read the instructions right, um, whatever. Recast on, um, got to my reasonable point, or got back to where I was before I reread those directions. And now I am back on track but that I have five balls of yarn attached to this right now. <laughs> I'm not sure how frequent the detangling is going to have to be, but it's probably going to need something. Probably going to need something. So I am going to have to sit down and probably look carefully at the pattern again, but you can begin to get a sense for how everything is going to look together. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to look really cool. Um, I think that um, the intarsia in the flax is going to look okay. And this is going to be the back piece because I figure I'm going to get better at the intarsia as I go. <laughs> that That's, that's the, the only... What would it be? The, the only thing that I think is gonna work out. So, um, so this is probably gonna be the back piece, so I'll follow the directions for the back piece. There's like a small difference in what's going on there. But I think it's going to be really, really cute. So it would have been nice to get a little bit farther. Um, so this is the waist which probably goes where my natural waist is, which is about here. So, we've begun. What I'm not sure about is whether or not it's turning out quite the right size. I haven't rechecked my gauge recently to see where I'm coming in at. But, um, what was it? I think last week I was working on gauge watches, so. I think I'm done with that. But that, um, in my little bag I have a dark blue and then both balls of silver and both balls of turquoise in play right now. So we shall see how everything comes together. Um, and it'll probably be the case where um, after I sort of get both top pieces done, um, because I'll have this edge. I will have to, um, sit down and figure out sort of my yarn usage up to that point, and maybe split it, split them in half or something like that, more accurately, so that, um, I can get as much as possible out of it. And I, since the front and back use slightly different amounts of yarn, um, I think that is the game plan, at least for the time being. So, um, what's interesting about this yarn is I do have to watch it pretty closely because it's very loosely plied. Um, so, like, the split stitches look pretty bad, but they're not too bad to fix. Um, it's very slippery and it's very eager to hop off the needles. So the stitches will run like cheap nylons. <laughs> if you let them. But I think overall it's going to be um, really, really cute. So we shall see how things go. But it's definitely not as mindless as I need right now. So it seems like there's a decent amount of sitting there with the pattern, looking at it carefully, and then um, figuring out what in the world's going on. 
so there is that. Mm hmm Yeah. So it's going to it's gonna be an interesting challenge. Oh, come on. Did you stop? Hmm. I'm not sure whether or not this is doing anything right now. If I minimize it, maximize, okay. <laughs> it there was some sort of glitch going on, so let's hope it's okay. <laughs> Alright, so it's not super duper mindless and it's not super duper portable. So um, it may end up being like a mostly knit night work at home sort of project. Um, just because it is pretty crazy pants. Um, So, I ended up changing my plans for my commission sock, um, and I ended up picking up three 50 gram balls of Pancroy socks at Michael's. So, um, it is, um, I really like yarn like this because it looks a lot like hand spun, um, and it is pretty thick. So I figured I'd better be safe and make sure that I had um, three big balls of it. Um, and that this will be what I end up making the commission socks out of. Um, so, like, yarn stains. So I was looking at the store and I'm like, you know what? This will be good. <laughs> um, Because that way, I think everything ends up working out nicely. Um, and what would it be? I find it to be pretty... Or what is it? I've heard decent things about, uh, about it on the internet. Um, and the only caveat being, um, be careful about the weight. <laughs> Which is why I got three instead of two. So. That seemed to be, I think, the right compromise for that. So, um, I don't know what will be. I'll probably be casting those on soon because that was what was preventing me from starting the commission socks, was having my needles stuck in the blue socks. So, that'll hardly even be stashed. Um, Let's see. One thing that has been um, really inspiring me um, is I'm actually thinking about casting on for the Exploration Station. So that is a Stephen West pattern. Um, I don't know. And it has like, what would it be? Ah. Ended up working out. So it is, or it sort of has like big short row wedges and then various um, texture blocks and stripes and that sort of thing. So that's sort of a zoomed in version. There we go. So, um, and it needs four skeins of yarn. And I happen to have these four skeins. <laughs> um, and they're all um, singles in um, several different sort of coordinating colors. And so what I was thinking of was um, what it would be using these guys for the shawl because I think it would look really, really nice um, and have all of these go together. So, because um, I've been in the mood for a shawl and it's really just a matter of like how quickly it is to, or how long it is until I just finally break down and do something about it. 
Um, but this is, um, so I have Madeline Tosh, and then these three skeins were skeins I got in Germany. So, feeling, feeling like I should break into the Germany stash. <laughs> like, I haven't done anything with it yet. <laughs> so, I think, I think I'm gonna wind for it because, um, I sort of like I'm in I'm in the mood right now. Maybe I'm like slightly frustrated with the intarsia. I don't know, but I feel like I'm in the mood right now. So what would it be? I sort of it's early enough that I think the the possibility of starting a big project like that's probably okay. Um a decent amount of knitting right there. So, um, and honestly, based on how much that shawl ends up calling for, there'd probably be a decent amount of leftovers too. So, things that you could combine again into an entirely different project for gifting purposes or something. So, that's sort of what's inspiring me right now knitting-wise. I am excited though, because I did managed to clear a spindle this week. So my wheel is empty right now. I need to decide what in the world it is that I'm, which project it is that I'm going to go after. Um, but my jerry box spindle is empty again because I finished the first half of the yak silk cycles. I ended up going to knit night at the local yarn shop on Wednesday because um, the dear sweet lovable one had to go to his hobby meeting. So I went to my hobby meeting. <laughs> They're all very supportive of knitting in the DFW Marine Aquarium Society. <laughs> they think it's fantastic when when members' wives have hobbies, <laughs> or husbands for that matter. It's an equal opportunity sort of hobby. So I have finished the singles. And bring it really close. Good focuses. Even closer. There we go. So it's looking really fuzzy. Um, but all sorts of layers of color in there. Um, so golds, greens, sort of a very light blue, and then this like crazy magenta and purple. It's so soft. Um, so Next stage is to do the itty bitty fractal, which will be comprised of these balls here, which my hands are way too rough to be contacting right now. <laughs> I do not know what's happened, but so first turtle complete, ready for the second turtle. And I'm just amused by the elephants. So um, I didn't immediately start it because would it be? This has been a long standing project for sure. Um, but I would like to eventually get on with it. So there's that. Um, I will be going sort of in the order that I rolled the balls in and just sort of go to town on this guy. But it's definitely taking a lot less space than it used to in this bag, which is cool. Um, I don't know what the likelihood is that I can, um, actually finish this project this summer for Stash Dash, so I'm not sure yet. Um, I didn't end up, um, what would it be? I ended up bringing it to midnight but not working on it the, whatever, normal Friday night midnight. <laughs> The one, the one I cannot miss. But, who knows. So, um, what would it be? I should be able to record next week, but it will likely be Sunday. Um, what would it be? 
Oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> Interestingly, um, my sixth wedding anniversary falls on a Saturday, so it comes back around again. <laughs> so I'm guessing that there will be plans, but that we haven't made them yet. But I might record Saturday, who knows? I've been trying to shift it that way. <laughs> But it is um, one of the few, or it, it is the, the final day that the Dear Sweet Lovable One must take me out to dinner. So, that, those are the rules. <laughs> Valentine's Day, my birthday, and our anniversary. <laughs> Everything else, whatever. <laughs> so, shouldn't be too, too crazy. Um, let's see. So. All sorts of crazy things going on. Pretty excited about all of the finishing that's been happening. And actually, there is one more project to like rejigger things. See, I brought it upstairs. Well, there's a plan for everything. <laughs> I ended up bringing it upstairs because I actually forgot to bring needles to continue working on it. But I did manage to get the sleeve off of my Chocolate Shetland sweater. So this is the Mold Cider, which is a um, baby cocktails pattern. Um, and both sleeves are removed! Yay! Yay! But I have to do some fixing because there was definitely a little bit of destruction and carnage going on. Um, the conclusion was that I needed to make the sleeves three inches wider to better fit in the armhole and make it a jacket. But this is the sleeve of great pain and horror that I completely unseamed. <laughs> so frustrating. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know if this time if I will actually um, end up having it be wrong side out. So. The world is my oyster. I don't think it'll actually be a big deal. So I'm going to keep the cap the same, but then make three inch wide inserts that are the length of the sleeve. And then I will have proper or jackety sized sleeves to go off of. And I don't entirely know what went wrong, but it did not turn out the way I wanted it to. And then the other sleeve, I guess, is... This one is still attached, but... Like, it's totally arm-shaped and it needs to be bigger. So, I'm not sure whether or not I'll do any other shaping. I think it's perfectly fine to make it bigger all around. And then after that, I will be able to either line it or just go with it. I'm not sure. But I had some good consulting time, and that was the conclusion on how to best fix it. So it shouldn't be too, too crazy, but um, I'll have to sort of carefully go through the whole thing and this whole thing and make sure that I didn't unintentionally destroy something. Because um, in order to get that sleeve out, the scissors did come out. And while it is a very sticky, sticky Shetland, um, <laughs> what would it be? I, I'll, I'll need to do a little bit of reinforcement. To keep everything together. Somewhere in there is um, my last ball of yarn. So, um, Hopefully, it won't be too, too crazy to fix. If not, I can scavenge from some other places. It's not like it's terrible. Um, like, I could, for example, scavenge a little bit from the collar if need be. But that's, that's where I am there. I think, I swear there must be other... I think it might even be slightly more than um, one to go anyway, so... 
or I might end up knitting the, the panel to fix it and try to figure out where to go from there. So that's the story there. Um, so that will be pretty big stash dash yardage as well um, if I end up using every last little bit of yarn for that project. So should be too too crazy to do. Um, part of it will just actually be sitting down and figuring out the whole fixing bit, but that that's the only sweater left that really needs some revamping. Um, so I should sit down and do that because it'll keep pushing me towards the crazy pants goal. Um, Alright, I think that is now everything. <laughs> All sorts of craziness. <laughs> All my future projects, all my current projects, all my finished projects, yes. So it feels good to be really productive. Um, so with that, I hope you guys have a lovely week and I look forward to talking to you guys next week. So take care guys, bye bye.